If you're new to Corel Draw, this quick start screen is a great place to spend some time. Navigate through the varying tabs and have a look. There are some absolutely brilliant resources available. Under gallery, you can see some artwork that's been designed by some incredible designers using Corel Draw. Also, on the front screen, the first tab, you'll notice that your recently saved or opened documents will begin to list and as you hover, you can see a preview of what they look like. You can also choose to go somewhere and open an alternate document. Or if you need some creative ideas, start here, new from template. We'll look at that in our next video. But for right now, we're going to start out by clicking new blank document. And new to Corel Draw X5 is this create a new document dialog. Well here, you can set up all of the parameters you require for this document, right down to naming the document, the DPI, page size, etc. You can set up for web and for various types of output. Well just bear in mind for now, the default settings very much suit a professional print output. So let's click OK and move on. Corel Draw is a vector-based drawing program. That means Corel Draw mainly deals with lines. An extension of that is we can create objects again using lines, we call this a closed object, and inside of a closed object we can place a fill, even a picture. And of course Corel Draw also allows you to add bitmaps, photographs. Now should you ever wish to really edit a bitmap, a photograph, choose your photograph and select edit bitmap up here on the property bar. This will then open up into Corel Photo Paint. Corel Photo Paint is a native bitmap editor. Some people will call it a raster editing program. And you can do some tremendous work there that we'll look at shortly. Add these three elements together. And of course, you can create some tremendous looking designs, as you can see. Well, let's have a simplistic look at how you can create lines and how this works. The toolbox on the left hand side contains all of the tools you will ever need to create all of your shapes, fills, colours, effects, etc. As you hover your mouse over any tool, notice the tool tip. The tool tip will give you a brief description of what that tool does and if there's a keyboard shortcut, as you can see here the Z key, you can use that to select that tool. Notice the little triangle alongside many of the tools. This indicates there's another group of tools, and if you click that triangle, it will display that group of tools. We call this a flyout, and the flyout will always contain tools of a similar nature than the, as the one that you can see on the toolbar. Well, I'm going to come down and display all of my outline drawing tools, and I'm going to select the freehand tool. To create a straight line, click once to create the start point, click again to create the end point, resulting in a straight line. For a wavy or curvy line, simply click holding your mouse down and begin to draw. When I release my mouse, notice how the curve automatically smooths out. Well, that's based on the value in the property bar called freehand smoothing. You'll notice that for every tool in the toolbox that you select, or for an object that you select, the property bar always updates with varying options and properties to affect the result. You'll also notice the hint docker updates as you select different tools or objects. For example, let's select the shape tool. The property bar and the hint docker automatically update. Now in this case here, you'll notice the blue squares all the way around this wavy line. I can select one, and hit delete on my keyboard to delete it. Or I can actually move to an alternate location which alters the final shape. These little arms with the arrows are called control arms. If you push or pull on a control arm, you will affect the shape of the curve as you can see. In time, as you learn to work with the shape tool, you'll learn to create very intricate shapes. There are also a number of drawing tools available that help us create perfect shapes. For example, I'll select the ellipse tool. This time I'll click and drag and create an oval shape. If I select the pick tool, which I usually use for resizing and moving, I can click on the little X and I can move to an alternate location. Or click on any one of the four corner handles to scale up or down. The side handle 
to stretch sideways or horizontally and of course vertical stretch as well. I'll just delete that and select my lips tool again. If I hold finger on control this time I can create a perfect circle. Then by selecting my shape tool you'll notice one single node appears. If I pull this node and drag holding my shape tool on the outside of the ellipse I can create arc shapes. If I pull the node on the inside I can create pie shapes and in this case I've created Pac-Man. To adjust the outline thickness is really easy. Straight up to the property bar and choose an alternate thickness. While my object is selected simply select a color on the color palette to fill and to change the outline color right click on any color. It's quite easy. You'll find all of these same principles apply to all of the drawing tools. No matter what shape you're creating, the property bar will update with parameters and you can fill your object, change the outline color and thickness as you need. Well, we'll learn more about all of this in our next lesson.